Hello friends, it has been a while. Today I'm going to be talking about my favorite weapon and arguably the strongest weapon in Metro Exodus, the railgun. So in Metro Exodus, uh, this railgun is actually an attachment to the T-car. Um, and it's an attachment you get very late in the game um, and it turns the pneumatic gas powered rifle into an electromagnetic weapon that shoots a projectile. So you get the attachment for the real gun um, in my favorite level, the Dead City. It's actually Miller's weapon that he gives to you um, right after you meet up with the little kid. Um, he gives you the green stuff and then Miller goes off with him and he actually gives you um, his real gun. Now as far as the stats go, it's, it's basically an overpowered weapon. It actually maxes everything out basically um, and you can still just shoot the standard T-car bullets, uh, which I think makes it arguably the best gun in the game. Uh, and it's definitely one of the most powerful, if not the best. Sadly, you get it on the very last level uh, where you don't really have to fight anything besides the librarians, which you can avoid and not actually have to fight. But with the addition of New Game Plus, you should be able to use the railgun the entire game, um, which is pretty cool. Now that I've explained where you get it, uh, let's just go ahead and jump into the physics behind it, um, how it's made, and then how it actually works in the real world. So the physics behind the weapon is actually a pretty simple concept. Um, all it involves is, is right hand rule. Basically the right hand rule is that this index finger is the current, this may be flipped for you but I promise this is my right hand. This is the magnetic field, this is the current, and then this thumb actually indicates the Lorentz force. And so when you've got a current going through this way in a magnetic field, you'd have a force pushing up or something like that. So this Lorentz force, um, as designated by your thumb, is actually the main basic principle that the railgun is built off of. Um, and so what you can do is you can have two parallel rails and then you can put something in between them that will connect the two rails and then you can have current flowing through there and it will actually push this projectile up along the rails because of this Lorentz force. So you'd have magnetic field, the current going through the rails, and then it would push whatever object up with the Lorentz force. So what you can see in the Metro games uh, is comparing the T-car versus the railgun the attachment that you put onto it. Um, you can see that the gas pressure vessel at the back of the stock has been replaced with two big capacitors. Um, and then there's a bunch of wires to the rails. So when the little ball gets pushed into the rails, it actually gets accelerated by the Lorentz force and the conduct from the conduction between the top rail and the bottom rail and then the ball that's in between. Now the actual railgun tech is something we have today, um, but as far as the game goes with how powerful it is, that's pretty unfeasible. Um, the two capacitors at the end there, that's just simply not enough capacitance to produce enough current. So the force is actually directly proportional to the magnetic field and then the current through the wires. Um, and so what you want is a ton of current thrown through those wires. Um, and those capacitors just aren't going to produce enough current. You need like a giant capacitor bank, that's what they're referred to as, to actually produce enough current that would go through there that would actually give it enough force to launch it out of the rifle as a bullet. So it would really take some serious advancements in capacitor and or battery technology, uh, creating some sort of new hybrid between the two for something like this to be possible with such a small capacitance bank. Um, you could do it in real life with like a backpack and you had a bunch of capacitors in your bag and then that was connected to the gun and you would have a capacitor bank in your backpack, but obviously that's not what they have in the game. That would look really dumb. But all of the technology behind it is actually pretty accurate. So today we actually do have something fairly similar to the rail guns used in Metro Exodus. The Navy's been developing this giant railgun cannon for the past like decade or two. It's been a long time. They've been developing it forever, but it's on a much, much bigger scale. Burn. The gun can actually produce a projectile that will shoot something at Mach 7, which is seven times the speed of sound, um, at over 100 miles. You can have something in the ocean on a ship, on a destroyer, um, then you can shoot something over 100 miles on the land or at incoming missiles or whatever. It's, it's actually really cool tech. And I think what's the coolest thing about this and why they're so interesting in the post-apocalyptic world is that they take electricity and then turn that and any conductive object into a projectile. Um, it just has to be the right shape to where it would fit in between the rails and actually touch the rails so that it's conductive all the way through the rails. Um, and that's really your only stipulation. You have a uh, capacitance, so you have a storage facility or capacitors to charge up a bunch of energy or electricity um, and then you've got conducting rods and then the little projectile that you put in there um, and so you can turn really anything you could theoretically turn like a soda can you melt it down and turn it into a little projectile which obviously would be very advantageous in a post-apocalyptic world uh, like the metro series um, which i think is very cool that they had that kind of attention to detail as far as making a gun that is like actually kind of usable in the real world, um, regardless of how big the capacitors would actually need. I mean, the Metro series is set in 2033 and onward. Metro Exodus, I think, is 2036 or 2035. And so we very well could have some 
new development and, and technology um, to where capacitors could be this big and it would charge enough to where you could launch something as fast as a bullet. But in the universe, uh, the actual war took place in about, I think, 2013. Um, and so that basically means technology probably stopped at 2013. And there's just no way you could scratch together like a little capacitor that would be this good and it would produce a, a po as powerful a weapon as it is in the game. But I think by the time we hit 2033, we actually theoretically could have something that's cool. And so positives for it, you've got electricity and then it turns any kind of sort of conductive metal into a projectile, which is pretty awesome. Um, as far as the downsides go, um, it takes a, a lot of energy. In the Navy Railgun Cannon that I mentioned that will launch a projectile at Mach 7 for 100 miles, um, that actually takes, it needs a generator of at least 20 megawatts of power. To put that in perspective, 20 megawatts is actually close to enough power to run about 20,000 homes. Um, and so it's pretty limited as far as like where you can put this thing, um, at least to launch something at that fast and that powerful. Now, the other thing that makes it sort of unfeasible is the capacitor bank that I've been mentioning. Um, and so you can see here in this picture, as with the Navy railgun, all of those blue things behind it, I'm pretty sure are giant capacitor banks. And so as you can see, it takes like an entire room of capacitors to launch something that powerful. And so when you miniaturize it, it still takes a pretty large amount of capacitors to be able to launch something anywhere close to a bullet speed. So it's pretty unfeasible as far as small arms technology. Um, but one thing that I do think is really cool that we could be seeing in the future, um, especially in a world where we've kind of mastered energy um, and energy is no longer like a like a resource. It's kind of just like a thing that we have. We have abundance of it. Then I think you could definitely see instead of using rail guns as a weapon, you could actually point them up and have rails pointing up, and you could actually use it for like launching a spacecraft into space or launching a satellite into orbit. Um, all you would need is enough electricity to charge giant giant capacitance banks, um, where then you would launch stuff exactly how you're doing with the navy where you launch it horizontally except you'd now launch it vertically and i really could see that being kind of the future of space travel as far as how we get things on and off the planet because it's really really expensive to launch something into space um just it just takes a lot of resources um and so if you're able to build something that was like renewable enough that you could build these rails and infrastructure and then you could just shoot things into space that would be a lot more cost effective in the long run so we really could see these in our lifetime and so yeah that pretty much covers why i think rail guns are so interesting and why i think they're really really cool technologies i hope i explained everything pretty well if you have any questions please leave them in the comments i'll definitely try to answer them as best i can definitely go watch some youtube videos of people making them if you like this video go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can watch all my other weird videos i have a lot more free time this semester so i should actually be able to post a couple of videos i've got some ideas in the works with that i hope you have a wonderful day and i will catch you on the next one